Wagwan, all generals. We are back. Uh, we got a third man with us uh, for once. We got we got Mr. Stavernow sitting over there. And uh, he's shown me the duality of man prior to us hopping on this podcast and recording. Uh, he had a, a beer out and then he put it away and out of the water. So he's now completely sober for the shift gear, which is uh, honestly very admirable. Uh, Mr. Rowan, thank you for coming on. How was, uh, how was, how's your life been, man? It's been a while. You know, <clears throat> life's good. We're keeping it professional today, of course, Wagwan viewers. Fantastic. Uh, yep. What's going on in life? Not much. It's cold. There's, it's been snowing yeah. in Canada. That's not good. I don't have my snow tires on my car. Had a miserable drive the other day. That's probably yeah, the most good, eventful man. thing I've experienced recently. Otherwise, playing a lot that of Pokemon. Nice. Okay. I like that. Yeah, you got to get your snow tires on, big boy. Like, that's a uh, oh, yeah. dangerous game. Dangerous game. Um, for all y'all that. coming up. You still don't have them. That's crazy. For all y'all coming up uh, on the weekend, we're making this sound a lot worse than it is. It's really like six degrees Celsius, which is really not that bad for the rest of y'all, uh, I think. Unless you're coming from like Florida or something, in which case you're going to die. So uh, prepare for that. Um, so today we're going to go over uh, what we kind of think the meta is, uh, as you can see on your screen or maybe not see on your screen yet. I don't know yet. I don't know who's editing or what's going on, uh, but maybe I'll you see it on your screen. screen don't worry. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for making me look like an idiot. So uh, we have a tier list on the screen somewhere. And uh, we're going to be providing our uh, tier list choices for um, for Toronto regionals, our home regionals. Uh, are y'all as excited as me, first of all? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm always, nice. besides Worlds, this is always my event I'm most excited for. Uh, this is the pinnacle. Yeah. Yo, wait, hold on. Kieran, you're not throwing this one by playing Lugia, right? I might, bro. We don't know. <laughs> what? There's no way. Yo, we just got a thumbnail. Yo, <laughs> there you go. That. Put it in the thumbnail. No, yeah, oh, yeah. Click that. I'm on the same page though. It would be like so cool to win Toronto regionals, just like yeah. win the home turf. I came close to winning Vancouver. That would have been cool too, but uh, Toronto would be the one for sure. I've gotten Pretty second. Dope. I've gotten top four at Toronto. I've gotten top eight at Vancouver. Second Canadian yeah. Nationals. I still haven't got first. <laughs> did you Did you lose to Piper on the Mewtwo control deck? No, I lost to Be- no. uh, Labella. He just like got optimal Dura boss every turn. I guess Lydia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Optimal yeah. And then I lost a long time ago. I lo- I was playing Seismic until I lost to a Grad on deck in the finals, so it's just, I couldn't really Oh, just yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for guys seniors, you won Canadian Nats once. Yes, but true. We'll uh, we'll allow that in the Double Tree Hotel on Dixon Road, legendary spot, truly. Really. <laughs> um, so we're gonna get into that at some point to kick off the pod. I got a, a thing I gotta talk about real quick and. I don't normally talk about baseball on the pod, okay? And I know, Rowan, you're not, you don't care about sports, so I'm sorry well, ahead of time. Watch right? some. Nothing um, on baseball, though. Yeah, you don't need to watch to know about this one. Kieran, I'm sure you've seen the Juan Soto contract. I did see the Juan Soto contract. Okay, guys. So we need to have a talk about this. So $765 million is what this guy got paid, okay? Um, that's more than LeBron James and Tom Brady have made in their careers combined, okay? Yeah. And what? I just want to send a heartfelt sorry to all Yankees fans out there. Um, I know there's quite a few of you. You make yourself very, uh, very uh, noticed. And Juan Soto had a $760 million offer from the Yankees. And he turned it down. He went to the Mets. That's like if Azul said, hey, I'm done with Twitch. I'm going to stake to make 5% more. <laughs> like, that's the equivalent of what we're talking about here. Okay. And I just want to send a heartfelt apology out to the Yankees fans. Like, this is a tough time. Uh, Juan Soto left you um, for the Mets. And in 15 years, he's probably going to be terrible. So, I mean, if there's any solace, it's that. So, I just want to throw that out there and um, say sorry to all y'all. Um, we never thought he was coming to Toronto. I'm a big baseball guy, but I can never talk about it on the pod because no one else cares about baseball but me, I think. Um, but when you guys all come down, you're going to see the Rogers Center, which is where the Blue Jays play, which is right next to the CN Tower, which is right next to the Convention Center. So this is all some sort of an educational lesson. And speaking of educational lessons, I want to provide um, a little bit of free reading before you come to Toronto. I advise all of you to watch T. Dot Goon Scrap DVD, part one or two. Have you seen <laughs> this, Rowan? You're looking at no. me. What are you talking about, bro? This just sounds uh, blank. <laughs> it's an educational video made by Toronto's finest. If any of you have watched Office Movers, uh, the show on Crave, it's made by the same guys who made the show on Crave. Um, it's a fantastic educational Toronto video, so please do watch that when you have a chance. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Karen, you can have the mic now. True. Well, I was going to say, uh, I'll give you guys my Toronto education. I'll put in the list my my list of, or my Google map of all the restaurants to go to in Toronto. Um, I'm a big Toronto proponent, as you guys know, so I have all the good spots there. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comment, places you want to go, things to do. Um, we have our Christmas market right now. So if you guys scrub out, you can go to the Christmas mm-hmm. market. 
Uh, it's a little overpriced. Do we recommend that though? I kind of, I kind of uh, don't feel, like that place. I feel like if you're from a city that doesn't have Christmas markets, I would say go. If you're from a city that has Christmas markets, I say you don't have to go. That's what I would say. Yeah. Um, like I've been the last six years. I don't think I've ever bought a thing there, man. Like yeah. it's like so overpriced. It's crazy. It is overpriced, but the photos are nice. And then uh, yeah. if you have kids, like juniors and seniors, I'd say the, the aquarium is actually really cool. Like mm -hmm. uh, they have this like section where it's like you're on like a moving carpet, kind of like when you're at the airport and it's moving, like you go under like the shark tank and all that. It's pretty cool. It's literally right next to the venue. CN Tower, if you guys want to go, don't buy a ticket to go up. Make dinner <laughs> reservations because you get a ticket included. And like the ticket to go up is like sixty dollars or something, and the minimum spend for dinner is like eighty dollars or something. So you're basically paying twenty dollars for dinner if you want to go to see a tower. And the restaurant rotates. So those are some of my tourist tips. If you guys are coming, any more questions? Yeah, video, like more sixty bucks to y'all Americans is like five dollars at this point. <laughs> yeah. so it's American dollars. So this is this is all pretty cheap, y'all. I'll tell you where not to go. Okay, don't go to Luxie's and don't go to Sugar Daddy's nightclub. Okay, those are my two recommendations. <laughs> I know y'all like to get up some some crazy stuff. Don't go to either of those places. Going to yeah, I think, I think everyone was thinking about that in New Yeah. <laughs> Very pop. It's actually like when you look up like clubs in Toronto, it's one of the first ones that pop up and everybody goes to it. Bro, it is terrible. Like, don't bro, go there. No one goes. I've never in my life. I'm from here. This might be a pickering. You don't know the like, right people. Bro, you're not from Toronto. So maybe the not Toronto people go there. That's what it is. It's not even in Toronto, bro. It's in, it's in Mississauga. So That's why, why man's go. Why would this show up for people to go to in Toronto? <laughs> Mans love to go to Sugar Daddy's, bro. I'm just saying. It's a it's a very popular bro, spot. I it's have terrible. lived here for like 20 years and I've never heard of this place. Have you been to Sugar Daddy's? Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> no, Maybe no, instead no, of talking no, about no. Sugar Daddy's nightclub, <laughs> we talk about some Pokemon. Yeah, so thank you, Rowan. I agree. <laughs> good idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, uh, well, so you got there you go, you go. There's a regional very far from <laughs> Toronto in Perth last very weekend. far uh so some interesting result gardevoir slow gardevoir one we saw two cloths in top four um i think cloth is like literally gonna be it honestly might be like the third most played deck in toronto we can get to that yeah. um i mean drago did well i think as expected but um the japanese players were obsessed with iron thorns for whatever reason like i'm looking here in the top three two three of them were playing a deck playing it um yeah, like there was the Dragapult Thorns deck got back to back top eights, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, it seems like the Japanese players, you were either playing Gardevoir or you were playing Thorns. Uh, and they did win the regional. So. It's not just the Japanese right now that love Thorns, I'll say that. Yeah. The yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of Thorn lovers right now, man. Everywhere you look. Is that? Next week. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. everywhere. It's everywhere? Ugh. I've seen, yo, know, like going through like the online tyrannies, going on ladder, like seeing from what people talk about in like group chats and stuff. Like, yo, it's, uh, there's a thorns plague going around right now. Cause people like, this isn't like the normal thorns, right? It's kind of like an attacking thorns, a little bit more attractive than just saying like, hey, if I flip crushing hammer heads, I win. So I think it's brought a lot of people on. Um, and I've seen a lot of it. So there, there is a plague going around. Yeah. It's like interesting. So like, I understand like you're trying to like give the deck time to set up, but it just feels like so much less powerful. Like you, yeah, play, why, you play zero tricks. Uh, why are we not just playing quad thorns? Right? That's my I thought. Uh, well, cool. Dragapult, like, okay, so here's the thing, right? Like, when you play Drago, like, if you function as a Dragapult deck and you just Phantom Dive a bunch of times, your deck is strong enough to beat almost everything. Like, Phantom Dive is an insane attack, right? So, Dragapult as a card, it's like fourth, it's weak weaknesses always are like the, the early game, right? Like, you never set up. You never get those two energies on there, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, the idea is, like, obviously, Thorns buys you that time. And um, I, I think that's kind of what makes this good. Uh, I also looked at this, and I was like, why is this good? Why would you play this? And mm -hmm. I played with it a couple times, and it, it kind of started to make sense. So I think if you pull it, picked it up, you'd get it. Like, it's just, Phantom Dive is just so strong. Like, the attack is just so yeah. good. Yeah. I think it's like Charizard, Gardevoir, all the kind of evolution decks. Phantom Dive is definitely yeah. very good. The only sketchy thing is your odds of starting thorns is like fifty three percent. So I'm like half the time, like you're giving your opponent the chance to just like do much. Like even if you play as Lugia, if you don't open thorns, which is like half the time, like they can just beat you if they set up. Because you don't play yeah. like any, you don't even play Halucha, you don't play Dusclop or Dusnoir. Uh The Toad Scroll is actually pretty cute. Like I guess it starts off Drago's V Star Power. People like point out in the comments for me last week, which I forgot about, which is pretty big. Oh, yeah, uh, same. same. <laughs> against Raging Bolt, like they can't play retrievals, right? So like they need to like Sada all the time. So eventually, if they run out of energies, mm -hmm. like they're gonna have trouble keep attacking. So um, also can't Pokey Stop. Hey, that one goes Pokey to the discard. So you block a lot of stuff. But my only problem with this deck is like it feels from testing it 
so 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 reliant on starting thorns especially when you go second or you go you want to go second actually with this deck so like i was testing against raging bolt with some of my students and it's like every game that they didn't start thorns i like rolled them like every games they started yeah. thorns like they won so yeah. um i don't know like it is good when it works like it's very very good when it works it's just like it's just really sketched to me that i'm like literally relying on starting with thorns every single game yeah, I think the idea too is like you have a two TM Evos and like even if you don't start Thorns, your idea is I guess you can keep up in some way. Like you just accelerate getting a dragon pulled up and you just say whatever, like no thorns this game. So I guess you have a chance at all times, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's like a crappy dragon pull deck when you start Dreepy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's literally yeah. what it is. It also kind of sucks when you go first because you don't play rare candy. So it's like uh mm -hmm. it is fine though, because like almost every deck picks blind first in this format. It's so like you should get to go second most of the games um but like if you guys go up against this deck like you normally want to pick second actually with most decks against it because they really want to go turn one arvin for trolley plus evo um interesting if i was playing drago maybe, should i go second against this deck um if you find drago no i think you still go first because like if you let them go first they can just retreat the thorns then your whole setup's kind of scuffed but that's what yeah. i was thinking yeah stuff like charizard probably you play a lot of outs to you play a lot of outs to Arvin here too, right? Like you're, they're most likely going to hit it most of the time. They play eight yeah. outs. Oh, four yeah. gears. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. also play the gears because they play four Crispin. But like normally, what you yeah. do is like you do the Evo with Thorns, and then you slow your opponent down enough. The next turn, you use Crispin, and then you move the like Psychic or the Fire to like the Dragapult or your Cloak, and you're ready to go. So, uh, yeah, it is pretty solid when it works. So. When it works. Um, I was like, so I'll kind of close the gap here a little bit so one of my like top picks for toronto still to this moment is dragon Ball. like straight dragon Ball with dust north the, the list that came ninth that uh stuttgart it's really really strong but it struggles with exactly what we were talking about right like you just can kind of fall behind um if you get set up and you start going it is like legitimately like one of the strongest decks out there but mm -hmm. getting to that point is very difficult so that is the attraction point of this whole thing and you have toe screw really kind of help you out with uh with the dragon matchup which is something normal dragon Ball struggles with so, like, yeah. if you're kind of on the fence about normal Dragon Ball, maybe this is something you want to give a try to. Um, I tried it. It wasn't really my cup of tea, but I think Dragon Ball, like, regular, and we'll probably get into this at some point, is actually really, really strong into Toronto. Like, um, the only issue is, can you survive turn one? Can you survive turn two? <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, there was, like, a normal Thorns that got top four. Um, this is just lame, so we're not going to talk about it. Uh... Cool. Yeah, then we had two cloths. Uh, the cloth that got second was just Robin's List from Stuttgart. The one that got top four, I don't know if you guys looked at it. It was actually kind of crazy. Uh, we have Hasui and Zorak V. We have Bloodermane. We have Reggie Drago. Uh, what so the lots hell? Of, lots of techs are going on in this list. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one thing with this deck is you have like a crazy amount of bench space, so I guess you can play all these things. Um, probably hurting consistency a little bit. Uh, right, you have to cut a lot of your core cards to fit all this stuff in. Uh, he also cut a area zero for a town store, which is like, like okay. But I've honestly found that like most oh, of the time you um, need you need area zero like turn one as soon as possible. Yes. So. And like I don't have trouble getting tools on with a Rangaroo, so I would probably favor area zero. But I mean, he got top four, so uh, the Drago is the most interesting one to me. Um, I guess it's more so just like you have like insane Iono protection between this and Fez, I guess. Uh, sometimes also like your opponent can knock you out with poison so then like reggie drake like fez gets shut off so i guess this is like another way around that um the zorark i'm not really sure what this is is this for like turn one you just use this and then you I go think... into the flutter against lost zone i think that's his lost zone yeah. package is, like, i think it's poison. to be lost zone. you poison and you go into the thing so i don't think it's good against like anything other than lost zone uh I I feel like... yeah right? with, like you can go into peckerunt as well so like okay, wait, if you binding mochi plus Pekarun, they take uh eight plus then you do seventy. So it does one fifty. That's a combo. Is there any like niche thing that you need to knock out with one fifty? Like you could just use any of your other attackers. Use claw. We're reaching right now. Yeah, like yeah. Why? What are we doing <laughs> with this guy? Surely he's just hard teching for lost box for some reason. Yeah, it's, I think that's all this is. Yeah, I this mean, deck looks like a pile though. Like holy, I mean, and like you know what? Though, what's really really cool about yeah. this? I think the Drago is like the coolest part of this list. Yeah, I like uh, the Drago. Yeah. Surprise! More people haven't looked into this. This is a pretty cool combo, Ladius. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, and like honestly, when I play the deck, like sometimes in my first trolley, I'm like, I just like leave a bench spot open or something. I'm like, oh, I don't need to do anything, right? 
So yeah, yeah getting Drago is yeah. fine. Drago. Have you guys played a lot of games with this cloth deck? I have played a lot of games. No, with this I haven't. Deck. Okay, yeah, I've played a decent amount of games with this cloth deck, and like when I first looked at it, I just assumed the deck was terrible. No, it's really good, actually, bro. That's actually like very good. <laughs> um, I was like losing a lot of games with Drago to it, and I feel like even your bad matchups, you can just like Petra and Donk most of your like Gardevoir and Zard. I think are like not great matchups, but decent amount of the time you just go first and Donk them. Uh, so maybe donk them once, they draw bad once. Um, so yeah, I kind of like, like this deck. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I would never yeah it's one it. of those things, like, I looked at this, and I, yeah, that was kind of my thought process, too. I'm like, I'm never going to play this. Like, I don't, no. I don't know, it just doesn't look, like, fun to me. But I'm sure it is. Sometimes your hands are really awkward. You have no, like, you can chorus, I guess, but it's kind of hard to get double turbo sometimes in the stadium. Um, against Drago specifically, you can't really afford to use Chorus because then you open yourself yeah. up to Serum, and that's like usually pretty bad. Um, yeah. So I was reading his Twitter, by the way. So like Flutter also shuts off Iron Thorns, uh, so it's like a soft tech to that. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh, yo, and Iron Thor Thorns did super well. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess he must have lost to the Gardevoir. He, he did lose to Gardevoir. Uh, I think that's. Probably Do you the care that much about shutting off Iron Thorns though? Like, there's just through it anyways. What do you mean? You have Squawk, you have yes. oh, like Luminion. Maybe? Yeah, but you your two mans just destroy it. You get up your Amoongus and Cloth and you're just ripping. No, I know, but like you have to get to that point, right? So like you probably just need to get that I once. Guess. Like you just put up Flutter, like you play Switch Cart into Flutter, and then you get your whole combos going. My point um, just being like, and I'm not the guy who played this, so I, I shouldn't talk about this, but I feel like it's not bad enough of a matchup to I guess the flutter works in the game. No, he said, it's, a lost he box said box. it's for lost box mainly, but it's like, yeah. It's just oh, okay, okay. Residual, okay. So. I misinterpreted what you said. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, first place was Slow Gardevoir. Very surprising, in my opinion. Uh, just terrible. You're like, like, terrible to talk in depth yeah. about this. Oh, yeah. bro, come on. Don't tell me, man. <laughs> yeah. The please. only thing oh, I'll I... say is I hope the play was clean this weekend. And that's, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> 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 yeah. You're, I do you're, think you're leaving a lot to be desired here. I wanted something good here. I want a juicy sound bite that can make us bro. Like I legit, Twitter. I'm legit scared. Like Big Pika will come for me, bro. If I <laughs> <laughs> oh, Big Pika is popping off lately. I don't know. They're yeah. uh, they're getting involved. So I would, uh... <laughs> he's getting involved, bro. He's getting involved big time. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk about this real quick. Um, how do we anticipate that this one games at any point in time? Like, well, I mean, like. He probably didn't play against Drago, if I had to guess, right? But actually, I think he did play against a couple of Dragos. I don't know. I just don't see how this wins. Like, how does this do well? Okay, I think all the matchups that are, like, really good for Guardi are still really good. Like, yeah. Raging Bolt, um, mm -hmm. Cloth would Cloth, have to be yeah, really Cloth good. Yeah, Cloth is really popular mm -hmm. right now. Uh, this list does not look great against Lugia, but um, I imagine it'd be pretty good against Charizard. Like, surely you're still auto-winning the Block Lax matchup. Um, he's playing Flutter main, so he probably beats Lost Zone, right? So a lot of these matchups that are okay, like, typically good are still good. Okay. Um, so Snorlax, that's a good matchup. Then yeah. Charizard, I mean, that's like not it's like, like great. Close. It's like Actually, isn't, isn't Palkia a bad matchup? Yeah. Okay. In theory. Uh, Lost, Lost Box, that matchup's like. Kind of close. You're fine. You play Flutter and Clefkey. Yeah, actually, I do oh, play yeah. Clefkey, so that's that, good. Yeah, if you play Flutter, it's definitely good. Thorns, Thorns. is probably a good matchup. Yeah, Thorns is a good matchup. Uh, Mirror, yeah. like if it's Chow build, I actually think the Triple Monkey build probably beats it. Yep. Uh, Whoa, Brent, you Brent I'm, Thomas, I'm very surprised. I need to DM Brent what happened in this match. I Brent, assume he like Brent. I am no crazy. longer a fan of you, Brent. How are you losing, bro? Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> he beat Rahul, which I'm surprised, because this version of Guardi actually gets farmed by Lugia without... Uh, playing uh, Spirit Two, yeah. But I, I mean, like, Lugia just bricks a lot of times, so that might happen. Um, I think he double ID day two. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what he did. And then got a buy, oh, buy an Asim, okay. Yeah. And that then, makes sense. Wait, yeah. he beat Drago again in top eight? Bro, what was happening at this tournament? I assume it's a fluke. I don't think the deck beats Drago. I think, especially if your opponent knows what's going on, like, if your opponent's playing Slow Guardi, and you wipe the Curlias, you have like a million turns. Against like Henry Guardi, usually you're like a little more hesitant to like wipe all the Curlias because it's not as good. But once you start realizing that they don't play Rare Candy, um, also like any deck with Dusknor or like Radiant Greninja, 
like specifically Terrapagos Dusknor can really abuse the fact that you just don't play rare candy if they figure it out. And just like yeah. Bond really is. Charizard can do it too. Um, so I imagine, I mean, it looks like he didn't play against a ton of these decks. Like he played against Polk, Dusknor, and Zard. Maybe they just didn't bomb his Curlias for whatever reason. Um, Maybe they just forgot. They forgot. Like, uh, yeah. Don't feel I, like it. I don't know. Like the deck's still okay, but I think it's just strictly worse than the Chow build. Also, I don't really know why there's a Manaphy in the deck. I'm not a fan of that card. Uh, well, maybe a little bit of protection against uh, Kirim. Well, he actually he beat uh, Palkia, so I guess actually you don't beat Palkia without this. Like, I just feel like it yeah. doesn't matter. I don't know. Okay, I guess the Chow build plays differently, but generally you just, like, put a charm on your Ralts. You want to use Clef Key anyways in most of the matchups that are trying to, like, attack your bench, so... Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know, guys. Like, we we played... We All three of us have played this game since we were a kid. We know how easy it is to fluke win three rounds, right? Like... Yeah. You think, fluke win anything at any time. That's I'm not saying that's what you did, but it's very possible, right? Yeah, I literally just DM Brent. How did you lose? <laughs> 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 what time is it in Australia? Hopefully, we have an answer. Hopefully, we get an answer on the phone. Oh, pod. where's yeah, that from, Melbourne? There. What time is it? Oh, it's two forty-four. Right, the bro should definitely be awake. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. <laughs> he gets back to us. Let us know if he texts you back. I will let it, I'll let everyone know if he texts back. So yeah, interesting win this weekend. I guess question yeah, do you think people will go back to slow guardy now or do you think people are just like so like set with child guardy? I think Adam Calmat will play slow guardy. Nice. <laughs> Good call. Uh, yeah. Other than him, I think I would highly recommend fast guardy. I don't yeah. think people will switch. I don't think people should switch. I don't think yeah, I was gonna say I don't think people should switch. <laughs> this looks yeah. <laughs> So, Let's stick with what we know here, guys. Yeah, very interesting win. Uh, not the deck I had expected winning, so... I mean, like, yeah. Like, just... It's, like, a good deck, but, like, you just, your Reggie Dragon matchup is just so, so hard. Uh, oh, but he beat two, so... I and mean, I, the one thing that is good, though, is, like, if Cloth gets super popular, like, Guardi just, like, farms Cloth. Oh, yeah. Like, I, that matchup's, like, almost unlosable, I think. Like, if you literally set up and play the game. You just have to get Donk twice. Yeah. So actually, yeah. that's another thing. Like this weekend, like if you're playing a setup deck like Guardi, if you're going second, bench two basics, just mm -hmm. in case your opponent flips over the mm -hmm. Pekka or something. So, uh, I think that's actually like, a real legitimate concern. Like as much as like we're laughing about it, I actually think it's like really legitimate. Yeah, I do think it's important. Like in some situations, not to. So like, say you're playing Charizard and you have like Charmander Rotom, and you're going second. Like there are some matchups where like you don't want Rotom. Or like yeah. Fez, maybe like Rotom you usually want, but like maybe Fez, for example, is one where you're like, Ugh, I don't know. Um, yeah. Or like I had one of my students ask me if I'm playing Drago and I start Cleffa, should I bench another Pokemon? And I was like, no, like <laughs> it's just so bad if you bench like a Drago, for example, and it randomly gets bossed into the active. Um, I wouldn't play around this unless it's like two Charmanders, two Ralts. Yeah, stuff like, you'd bench anyways. Type yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I feel like if I'm playing Drago and I start Clef, I'm absolutely benching a Drago there. I think I think I have. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing a it's so now, risky. No, what what if like your opponent is just playing like any deck with an Iron Bundle in it and just like Iron Bundles, and you have to send up your Drago V on fair. turn one, and then you I can't. Mean, like, worst comes to worst, though, at least I don't lose immediately. Like, Dude, how, how Drago's many decks my favorite attack. Play Bundle versus how many? Like, if we say Cloth, like so I don't know, like eight percent, and then what decks? Play, how many decks play Bundle? Like, like Maridon plays bundle. Um, wait, wait, wait. Maridon plays bundle. Wait, wait, wait. Bundle. Plays bundle. Oh, no. What? All the decks, most of the decks that play bundle will call second against you. Or some of them, at least. That's not, true. Not Goldengo. Not Goldengo, Gold but yeah. Gold Maridon. Well, doesn't Maridon blind first? Yeah, Maridon. Yeah, so like just Bolt, I guess. Will is, But yeah, like so Maridon's going first with bundle. Goldengo. Some Drago decks. Cloth. I think goes first with yeah, the Clef bundle. Like Cloth plays the bundle, so you're gonna start Clef. You're gonna bench That's the true. Drago. You're screwed either to, way. To play around the Donk. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're. Yeah, yes, you are screwed. <laughs> you might as well just not play around it. Hopefully, yeah, you don't get Donk, and then you can go from there. If it's like an Ogre Pond, yeah. it's less bad. But if it's Drago, it's really bad. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lose, lose. Yeah. So maybe yeah, maybe don't. If you have good stuff, bench too. Not whatever. Unlucky if you get Donked. Uh, Rahul actually made top 16 with Lugia. He almost made top 8. He hit Thorns on the winning end. And the guy wouldn't ID oh, into Ace him, which fair enough, because the guy could dodge Ace him by winning. Uh, he basically just went back to playing... Alright, I guess he's not... Oh, we'll go back, but like he's just always been playing like this style of build. He cut the Vessel for a Water Pond. 
Um, I like the water pond. Yeah, I think water pond is good right now. A lot of like decks don't play a way to switch. So you can saw block a lot of stuff. Um, uh, the lightning, the lightning on. is yeah, and uh, and golden go Togekiss. I mean, you can beat that anyways. Oh, true. Okay. Um, <laughs> the lightning still to me is like so random. Like without vessel, I'm like, am I mm -hmm. ever drawing this? Like, I guess maybe. I don't know, but it's in there. You're the expert, man. I trust in you. I, I yeah, tried, I've tried the whole build, even with Vessel. I'm like, I almost never do the lightning at like the opportune time, right? Um, but I guess if you want to Raikou and hands in the same game, gives you the option too. Uh, yeah, very solid list if you like playing this style. The rules list is pretty good. Uh, re research always sketches me out. I'd play four, but he has bundle, I guess, in there for extra gust. I'd probably just cut bundle for fourth research. Hey, more bundle mans, nice. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything too crazy when I look through the top 32. Um, yeah, the, the rest of the day two was pretty, pretty pedestrian. Yeah. The uh, I think we need to talk game. about, yeah, we need to talk about the fact there's only one gold Engo in there. <laughs> that's, uh, that's interesting. There's, there's a lot of hype around it. Oh, sorry. I must've missed one. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of hype around this deck right now. There's a lot of people playing this. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't want to say it was overinflated from the double top eights there, but it definitely feels like uh, it might not be in the greatest place right now. Well, I mean, this is like a small regional with like a high concentration of top players, and like they didn't play Golden Go, so like that might be part of it, right? Like I, I, get that. I think like uh, like the Australian group, like they all play Drago, right? Like Brent, Natalie, all them. The Japanese I players played, are like... playing Thorns or Gardevoir, I guess, and then. Yeah, which I guess are decks you kind of lose to. I play like over two hundred games with Dengo since uh, that happened, and like oh, really? the deck feels kind of underwhelming. Really, uh, I think the deck feels really good. Yeah, I think it's good. It's I don't know, like it, it felt good at first, and then it kind of. I've tried both builds. I've tried everything with it, and like I'm winning most of the games as you should, like on ladder and stuff, right? But I don't know. It just, it just feels like it's just missing a gear for me right now. Um, into this meta, it feels like when people weren't prepared for it, and I don't even know what the adjustment is. I guess people just know how to play against it now. Um, it definitely feels a little bit less appealing to me than it did before, but that's a conversation we can have at some point. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to Golden and we'll do that share, but yeah, let's skip over here now for Toronto, what we think our tier list is and the meta share for each deck. Um, I think I had put pretty much, or the Trainer Hill Default has most of the popular decks. If we forget one, we'll put one in after, but, um, all right. Rowan, where do you sit on Charizard? So it, like, one Stuttgart. I still don't think his Drago matchup's the best, but it's picking up, like, a lot of steam and hype lately. So where do you think Charizard sits? I think it'll be up there, like higher than it's been. Uh, I don't want to say ten percent, so like under ten percent. I think it'll be ten percent at least. You think it'll be ten? I was gonna say like eight or nine. I don't think it'll be ten. What was 10? this Stuttgart? Let me see. I think so. Oh, not that one. The Stuttgart. It was. It was eight percent actually. Yeah. Okay. Look at look at Sacramento because that's. I feel like that's. that's those are all American. the same people, right? Oh, same thing. It was eight point seven. Yeah. So, I don't know. I Wait, think it'll is, be about. Why does Sacramento get decimal points? That's a great question. Advanced right. statistics, man. American West Coast preferential statistics. treatment. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think people like playing Charizard. But, like, yeah, I don't know if it'll go crazy. Like, it's one, so people might have more confidence in it. Because I think a lot of people were, like, trashing mm -hmm. the deck. I mean, like, oh, it's not good, yeah. whatever, whatever. I I'm going to guess 10%. I don't know. But you think it'll just stay around 8? There you go. We can put it at 10. You guys both got 10%. We'll put it at 10. Let's go, let's go 9. We'll put it in between. Okay, there we sure. go. Do a little uh, averaging of I all of our scores. Yeah, I've gone to the Jackson Ford school of Zard hype, and I really do think that this deck is pretty good right now. <laughs> do you like, like the secret box? I like the secret box. I do a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, no I one's playing it. I'm going to put an A tier for now. But yeah, no one is playing secret box. Yeah. That's very interesting. Like, uh, Jackson did really well with it, and just, like, it just didn't take off. So actually, I can check mm -hmm. if like what percent people are playing it if we go here in this yeah. format. Can, we, um, can you put in a custom tier for Boston Pizza so we can put it in D so no one goes to eat there? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think we just needed that just for the community. That's like a Toronto place that people come into and they're like, yo, Boston pizza sounds sick, but that place sucks. Bro, Don't go there. The only Boston pizza that was nice was the one that connected to Bigman's Fun Works that had the bowling alley. Classic. Wow, what a throwback convention center. Yeah. Not even a convention center. Convention center. Is that, I don't know, man. That's a rave <laughs> studio. That's an arcade. That's a builder's there, place. I don't know what that like place Chuck is. Chuck E. Cheese, bro. Isn't there a water there's park there? There's there a water park. There's a conference center. I had like a, some university events there. There's like mini golf. It's just they have everything. It's a big events one work. But um, it seemed like one person played Secret Box. I'm guessing out of like 100. If the average is mm -hmm. 101. Person's got a Jackson man. coached. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. There are Jackson Disciple. I'm going to try and see if I can find it on the list real quick. 
I can't. Here. Michael Dones. Let's see this guy's list. Uh, jamming. Yeah, it seems like it was actually like basically pretty similar to Jackson's. So, I would assume, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like this hasn't taken off this build. Uh, I think maybe the thing is like Charizard's been played for like one way for so long. People are just like so used to it, right? And they're like maybe just, yeah. like not switching over. And like the stamp build has shown that like it's one, right? So it's like, um, it's proven. So maybe if Jackson like wins seems... LAIC, people play this, but. Yeah, it seems like it's a different way of playing the deck, right? Like, it's just entirely kind of different. I was having some beers with the fellas last night. We were playing some games down in the uh, Anil basement watching the Raptors, and it felt like every time that I played against Searbog Zard, when he kept it to the end, it was always just that one card that won him the game every single time. And, like, it's like a different kind of application, right? Like, there are times where Unfair Stamp is really, really good at just kind of disrupting the game, where Seeker Box helps you reach a little bit farther. In times where normally it's it's kind of tough to recover from like a KO plus I own it a two or whatever. So I don't know. It seems pretty good. If I were to play Charizard, I would probably play Seeker Box. I feel like you just kind of get all the pieces you need when you need it. Uh, I think Unfair Stamp has actually like gained some more points for me because I think Lost Box is actually a deck now. And like I think Unfair Stamp is like super important when you play against Lost Box. That's um, fair too. But yeah, I do think Seeker Box is probably underexplored. Like I haven't played the Seeker Box build enough to have a really firm opinion, but. From playing it, I think the stamp is pretty decent in this meta. Uh, the other thing with, like, yeah, with Box is, like, uh, it lets you keep up with aggro decks sometimes a lot more than, like, the other builds, because you basically get everything you need, so. Um, yeah. I think, I think the Seeker Box also lets you, like, get aggressive and actually initiate the prize trade, um, which, like, against a lot of matchups, you're trying to call first, right? Like, against Drago, you want to go first. And so Secret Box helps you, like, turn two actually do something productive yeah because um, a lot of the times i see charizard players call first and then on turn two they're like uh, okay rare candy pidgeot pidgeot for charmeleon instant charge and it's like okay that's just like not you good enough gone second yeah <laughs> yeah you should you should have yeah. just been go going second right well, and i think because no, then like that. you if you get pidgeot established like for example against yeah. Diego, you can't establish pidgeot you go second yeah so it is i guess there is still merit but um i feel like secret box really goes with like this trend of like people calling first with Zard and like not playing Cleffa and like playing more nest balls. So I think it's really synergistic. Yeah. Yeah. It lets you cheat some deck building spots since it's like kind of like a bunch of cards in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. I think uh Ron, I think a Corona and a Lime are pretty synergistic too. They are synergistic, but I don't have limes. <laughs> oh, I I understand. Okay. And I, I don't have snow tires, so I'm not going to the grocery store. Very Even though that's true, actually, this, this is for your own good. Yeah, see? So that's synergistic. <laughs> that is synergistic. Snow tires in Canada are also synergistic. You should look into <laughs> they that. Are, they are. <laughs> I should get my snow tires. I really should. <laughs> okay. Uh, Next up is Drago. All right, you guys think it's yeah. S tier? You guys think it's just A tier? Just put it's an A. S tier, bro. S tier? A? I think it's A yeah, tier, bro. No, I, I don't, don't, think, you, I don't think you have really? enough good matchups to be like just S by itself. Like, there's oh, still, man. like, a lot of decks, like, a, there's too many aggro decks for me to be like, all right, like, I'm putting this, like, by itself in S tier. I think it's I'm still... Actually, I, it, could go, it could go S tier. If any deck is going to go S tier, like, it needs to be Drago, I think. If we're gonna I think it just has, like, so much potential to separate itself at any time from the rest of the meta that if there, like, like Ron said, if anything is S tier, Drago is S tier. Or maybe this is a non-S tier format. I don't know. I, I don't think it's an S tier format, to be honest. Yeah. I don't think Drago's by itself. I'm with you. When I think back on like S tier decks, it's not it's not S tier. Yeah. Like uh like Reversal Guardi, that was S tier. Lugia with like powerful colorless energy, that was S tier. If you're like I feel like if we're like questioning it at all, it's just not S tier. Yeah. I would argue Drago last format was S tier. Uh, I, I'd probably go to the grave like for that format? one. Like Worlds. I think Worlds format yeah. was probably S tier. But now, now like I feel like Maridon is kind of not a good matchup. Uh, I feel like cloth, cloth is like a, a little matchup. concerning. Yeah. Um, cloth is catch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like if I use the same website trainer, you can see their matchups. Like, but uh, like alternatively, some of the decks that used to bully it, like Snorlax and Lugia, are also kind of taken down, right? Well, no, Lugia is actually. Well, Lugia was like always like okay. I think Lugia was like fifty fifty. So is Snorlax. Like as long as when you, you play te when you play Temple. Yeah, I, but now I guess you don't. Mm -hmm. So okay, Drake. Okay, let's see. I mean, like I don't know, across the board, like on paper, its matchup spread is actually like not that good. It just gets like carried by like if you're a good player, like you can just skill diff people so hard with the deck compared to like the other ones. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I feel like it's hard to put the deck in S tier 2 when it's like it has a high like barrier to entry, for lack of a better term, where it's like you need to be really, really good at Drago to like get the most out of the deck. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, a tier it is. A tier, A tier. We got what, what percent A-tier are we going to give it? Do you guys still think it's going to be the most popular deck? I think it's a 12 for me. Yeah. Like still number one, but very marginally so. Yeah, I think 12 is a good number. Yeah. I think so. It does feel like a lot of people are kind of giving up on it, to your point. Yeah. Like, it does feel like uh, people are starting to realize, like, hey, I need to be S tier with the S tier for it to be really that good. Right? I don't feel like be, giving uh... up on it. Like, I think it's, again, so one of those decks that's such a loyal base. Like, if you've been playing Grego for a while, you're going to keep playing it. It's a fun deck, too. Like, the V Star Power is fun. Talking Hero Discard is fun. I think people like the Executor card. Like, that's a fun card. So. I'm still not sold on that card, but yeah. Yeah, I, don't I go know. back and forth on <laughs> if I like the card or not. Because I feel like I'm like losing yeah. both anyways, probably. So like, yeah. yeah. What is it really doing for us here? It's it's like decent sometimes. Like when you go first in mirror, for example, like you can, it's like just take two prizes. Um, no, it's like it's, no. Sure. It's niche. I know. I agree. It's like, but it's niche. But like sometimes it's like good against control. Sometimes that's not that popular. When bro, when people are cutting goo for this thing, I'm like. Guys, can we No, you need to play Gujo. Not... Like, okay, I think if you play, like, in Masters, where, like, Reggie Drago, or in Seniors, where Reggie Drago's, like, crazy popular, I think Gujo's really good. Because, it, like, it makes your mirror mm-hmm. way better. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't cut Goo for... If I had to pick between Goo or playing Xavier, I'd pick Goo, I think, first. Mm-hmm. To me, good the enough. Gudra is also, like, fundamental to how the deck works. Like, it lets you flip V-Star on turn two in some mm-hmm. situations, where, like, if you flip V-Star on turn two and don't use Gudra your Drago dies and like yeah, the, the so game is stuffed. over. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And there's like some games where like maybe you start Reggie Drago V and so you can't Cleffa. And so you just have to like send the V star. And if you don't play Gudra, you're just going to immediately lose. So I feel like Halucha should be coming back in the deck too. I don't know why it ever left to be honest. I but... have a Halucha in my deck. You have a Halucha? Yeah. I don't right now. <laughs> well, it depends. Like, you can play. It's like you can play Noctowl and you don't get to play Halucha, or you can cut Noctowl and you get to play Halucha. I think is how it is. And like mm-hmm. I go back and forth because like Noctowl is like super powerful. Like so is just like some of these tech cards that you can play like Halucha. So I don't know. I don't know what's the right way to play it to be honest. Like a hundred percent, but that's just an observation I've had that I feel like it's pretty decent. I just found the deck to be like I find the deck to be so inconsistent that I cut all techs out of my deck like when i play it it just feels like if i play the game my deck is strong enough to beat anything like why am i even janking up my deck that's kind of always been my mentality with drago yeah, yeah. that's fair not a bad policy honestly yeah i don't know like at worlds they are carried by attack or carried by the spirit team in my deck and that was the only time i kind of swore by attack but like now i look at the list and like i haven't played drago in a while so i don't know but i look at the list and there's just like so much going on with some of these builds like there's so there's some of these guys are playing like seven attackers I'm like guys what are we doing here like your deck is good enough to run over anything when it works actually right? man, what's your what's like, your opinion on towards list the same for you and you guys play more than me this deck it seems weird for this format to be like, honest do you remember his um his Urshifu Charizard, uh, whatever that deck was. That's what sure. this reminds me of. Like, I, like I don't know why we have. Like, and you were saying six attackers. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I actually like Haxorus. I think I'm one of the only people who likes Haxorus. Why, why I actually do you like really Haxorus, like Haxorus though? Okay, I feel like Haxorus and like Executor do almost the exact same thing. Close. Yeah, they do very similar things. Except Haxorus is more just controlled. Like, if I were to play one of the two. I'm not saying I'd play Haxorus. I shouldn't even say that. But I think I think Haxorus has its uses. I don't think it's as crazy as people think. Like, what is Haxorus for that, like, Executor can't do? You're hitting your 230s consistently, right? Yeah, like, if but... somebody's in the active, you know you're going to kill it. Yeah, but that's what Executor can do, too. Like, you can just take two prizes with Executor. Potentially, Executor can do it. Okay, well, if I'm playing, I like, it's... Drago, for example, I can just Executor. I'm going to knock out one of the two prizes. If you play against Terrapagos, and they have only one Terrapagos in play, you can Haxorus it. Yeah, I guess. But you might have to flip for the egg. Okay. And but... I think that's it. And Lugia, I guess. But Lugia plays... Okay, I guess he plays Temple. I was going to say Lugia plays... He plays Temple. Bro, like, so... why is this guy... Like, why are you still playing Temple, man? Come on. I don't know. He's, like, teching for Lugia. Cut like, this is me, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys actually think Temple's incorrect? I actually, like, would play a Temple, I think. If Bro, I like, played Lugia's this. Lugia's meta shares, like, at all times... Like, I know this is going to come off as me, like, Lugia propaganda, whatever. Uh, meta manipulation, but like, bro, like Lugia wasn't even on the graphic, like in Stu, like not even like best of the rest day one, like. 
Yeah, but like it, Temple it, is just a good card. I guess what? Okay, okay. If you go you to the day me. two okay, standings, yeah, go ahead and run. yeah, I can help you out here. If you go to the day two standings, cloth Temple's very good against cloth. Okay, they play, they play four of the stadium though. Yeah, we're ironing them to like one, and then we like Gudra them and don't kill anything. They can't have fed. fun finding um, it. And then against Terrapagos, boom, same thing. Temple of Sinnoh, they they pass, and we win the game. Yeah, Terrapagos, I, like I think it's decent. Cloth, I can see actually. Um, also good against uh, both the uh, like control and Starlax. Oh yeah, uh, well, not Starlax anymore. Fair. I guess they cut miss, but I guess if you're just like okay, just like punting raging bolt, which I don't think is fine if you're trying to win the per tournament. Uh, and yeah, actually, I can see the argument for it. Raging bolt is also like, like I feel like it's on the decline. I feel like Maridon is and kinda... are taking its share. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. We'll get into this in a sec, but I'm actually really bullish on Roaring Moon right now too. Yeah. Which I think is another one of those culprits. It's like interesting though, because like I feel like like Charizard's on the rise too now, so that's like not good for the aggro decks. I, mean, I feel like Cloth is actually pretty decent for most of the aggro. It's like I don't know. Actually, Cloth is just an aggro deck itself. It's probably fifty fifty for most of the aggro decks. Dude, know. after this video, all man's gonna be playing Cloth. It's crazy <laughs> Cloth propaganda right now. They're already playing Cloth. Yeah. If you, if you yeah, they are cloth, actually. Yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Lost zone next. To me, Lost Zone is kind of in a bit of a disappointment in this format. I feel like I was expecting it to do way better than it has so far. Because, like, on paper to me, I'm like, you literally beat almost everything that's not Drago. But I guess in practice, the deck just sometimes, like, can't get set up. You miss Chorus. It's, like, kind of slow and clunky sometimes. Um, I still think it's good. Yeah. Like, I I've... feel like it'll make top eight, so, like, soon. But, like, I don't know. It just it hasn't been performing as well as I thought it would. The Drago matchup's terrible. Also... The Maridon matchup, I played this to a cup. I actually made a YouTube video on it. So for all your viewers, it if was. you're interested in Lost Zone, check out my YouTube channel. I, I got a video on it, but um, I don't think it beats Maridon. I think they, like in theory, you're like Pikachu and it's so good, but then they just like amp, amp, amp and use Magneton. And... I think Lost Zone has like the same thing as Rage Drago. It's like an even greater effect. Where it's like you have to be really good at playing Lost Zone to like get the most out of the deck. Like that's me. I consider myself a pretty good player, but like when I play Lost Zone, I'm like, man, like this is actually really hard. Like, I'm like, if I want to play this deck, like I would put like a crazy amount of hours into playing Lost Zone. So. It's a different style of deck too, though, right? Like, yeah. It's not like something you're just gonna like pick up from being a good player somewhere else and be able to play it. Like, you're right, you got to put in a good amount of time. So I still think I would probably put in like B tier. I think I think it's really good. I just don't think it's like a A tier contender. And I was gonna argue even like low A tier, man. Like if the deck is really good, it just hasn't found the right pilot really yet, in good. my opinion. I just don't think it's like proven itself yet for me to put in A tier, you know? I yeah. like the B tier. If it beat yeah. Maridon, I would I would advocate A tier. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd put what are you guessing, like five percent is what I would guess. Like I guess. less. Yeah, less. less. Like it's low. Yeah, I don't know. Like four percent? No. Yeah. 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 I like how uh, Rowan had landed on his YouTube channel. And now everything centers around Maridon. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> the deck is actually so good. Is good. good. I know. I it's know. the best yeah. turbo deck I've played in like forever. Like I usually don't consider turbo decks, uh, but I, I could play this deck to Toronto. I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's solid too. Yeah. All right, we talked about Golden Goat earlier, but all right, what tier do you guys think Golden Goat is? It good enough to be A tier? Or do you guys still think it's hanging in the B tier? B tier. Yeah, I think it's still B tier as well. Uh, okay, do you guys think that the Togekiss version is better or the Palkia version is better? I'll die on this hill. Go ahead, you guys go first. I think Togekiss is better. Uh, I just, I just think like the option to just win games that you're supposed to lose, I think it's just sick. Um, I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I don't have to lecture anyone. Yeah, we can carry on. I will say the Palkia, anyway. the Palkia version plays yeah. more energy, which I kind of like. But like, yeah. I think the Togekiss version is just kind of better. So here's the thing, and this, this is going to resonate with Kieran more than anyone else, but Kieran always says, I play the tournaments to win the tournament, right? Like you're not playing for day two, you're yeah. playing to win the tournament. If you're mm -hmm. playing to win the tournament, to uh, Togekiss Gildango is the best version because you can just high roll and run over everybody. Um, the thing I like about Togekiss, you get it out early, you get one heads flip out of three, potentially, you fit your you fix your entire prize map, you're right back on pace. Um, the thing I don't like about it is 50 HP Togepi is very sketchy in a format full of angry ghost guys blowing stuff up. Um, I, like, but I don't know. What I will not say, that, not that prevalent anymore, I feel like. like. Only really Charizard, I feel like, is the popular that plays it. Pult is also know. concerning. Yeah. yeah. Is Pult's just a bad magic for Goldengo anyways, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Don't you, don't you uptrade against them really well? I feel like if you go first, it's, it's probably like, fine. I more so meant like Pult and Drago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ah, uh, yes. That, that bro, make Togepi a lot more sense. heals your Golden Go, and then they can't knock out at once. <laughs> it's so broken. Oh my gosh. Wait, doesn't that have yeah. like half HP? 40? No, I think it has the same. Or it might have less than me. No, it's, it's 50. The same. It's 50. They all have 50. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, sorry. Just finishing off on that. Like, the Palkia one is really consistent. You're going to probably have a better time in terms of controlling your own fate, but the Togekiss version is very, uh, very explosive, which I really yeah. like. And like I said, I played a, like a couple hundred games now with this deck, and uh, I just feel like the Togekiss one is better. Yeah, I think it's like it was five percent Duke card. I think it'll be five percent Toronto. I think people like this deck. It's like a solid deck. It's fun. Yeah, so, I'm gonna put five. Okay. Back into B tier. B is for Burlington, right, <laughs> Rowan? Sure, absolutely. My home turf. <laughs> I'm fair, baby. Uh, all right, Rowan, is Murata an A-tier deck to you, or is it still B-tier since it's an aggro deck? Yo, if we're putting it B-tier, it's criminal. Like, it's actually all criminal. Right, so A-tier, A-tier, A-tier. Okay. Yes. Like, I almost, like, if, if S-tier was, like, a thing, like, if, if Drago, I feel like Drago and Maridon are, like, a step above every other deck. Do you really, th- I feel like, didn't, like, Maridon, like, kind of flop the last two regionals? Like, I feel like... It blows me away. Like, I actually don't know uh, why. Maridon did pretty bad. You're this, really right? bullish on this, eh? I'm surprised. I'm, like, really high on this Maridon deck. Like, my generators always hit. You thin your deck so well. Your draw engine is so strong. Like, your your opponent can never kill your Mew or your Fez because you they have to kill your energies. And you, ha- uh, yeah, I think it's really good. It's really good. I think Len is behind him with, like, a gun to yeah, his head. some propaganda here. <laughs> <laughs> propaganda. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think it's good. I don't think it's that good. Like, I don't know. It's still like linear to an extent. Like, like what? What do you not like about the deck? If you think, if you talk like matchup wise, I still think it has like trouble like chaining like three attacks together. Like, especially when you get disrupted every turn against like decks like Charizard, for example. I still think it's hard. Um, I still feel like you can lose to Drago really easily, especially when they like they just Phantom Dive the Magnemite. Like, that's kind of annoying to me. Um, and sometimes turn one, I feel like turn one, if I whiff my attack, like, the game is, like, over on the spot. Which doesn't happen, oh, like, is. all the time, but, like, it happens, like, a good, like, 20% of the time sometimes, so. Um, that's just what kind of holds back to me. But, like, I still think I agree with you. I'd probably put, like, the bottom of A tier. I still think it's, like, really, really good. I just think, like, the fact that it gets hands and the other aggro decks don't just makes it, like, better. This is Lugia propaganda. Yeah, uh, that's worry. the song here. Right playing on. Well, I can be Maridon with Lugia. Don't worry. I have secret. I have tech. like I, I, I have secret tech this... for for Maridon, bro. Oh, the ogre pawn. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Can this build of Maridon is actually like really. It, it's a we talked about this last week. It's a lot more like skill based than the previous ones for sure. Um, mm-hmm. It does feel like sometimes you just stall out though. That was kind of my beef with it. Um, I played it a bit too. I felt like like mid game. I was just like, how am I drawing cards? My bench is full. I don't have area zero. Whatever. It just feels like it doesn't play research, which is also like I don't know. I feel like I want to play one research in the deck. Sometimes I secret box. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't want Arvin. I'm like, I want research. Like you know. I want research. Yeah. yeah sometimes you do want research. You're right. Yeah. Okay. One research. I've seen one Iono. Which That's is also like, reasonable. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think like even against Charizard, if you go amp amp. Uh, Raichu or like Amp, like so if they have like Rotom, you can go like Amp, Raikou, Amp. And that's only 10 energies. It's not trivial to set that up when they're playing Unfair Stamp on Iono every turn, though. No, it's not It's not trivial, but like I think Charizard is like, it's one of its worst matchups. No, it got better with Magneton, that's for sure. Yeah, and so your line is still pretty reasonable if you like, I think, run like 1.5 energies per generator or something like that, like you get there. Okay, but I practice this. Like, the Charizard player can actually, like, Briar when you're at two, and they can shut you off doing Magneton for the win at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's annoying. That's definitely annoying. So And, like, the other problem is, like, good players know to pop your Magneton. That's the other issue. Like, even though it takes you off prize trade, like, if they pop your Magneton, life is tough, man. Life is really tough. So, yeah. You need the Magneton. The Magneton is, like, yeah. the lifeline yeah. of this deck. So. Yeah. It's like having a half of you. Yeah, definitely still probably, like, A tier for me. Mm-hmm. What meta share do you guys think it'll have? It had 8% Stukert, but I feel like it's kind of trending down. I feel like Cloth, like as an aggro deck, is taking share from all the other aggro decks. Like, I was going to guess like 7% if I had to guess where I think Rhino would sit. I got 6. You guys do not like this deck. This deck is what do you so mean? Cool. I, don't, I think 7 is such a reasonable... Like, look, it had 8% Stukert. Sacramento, I don't even think it was on the graphic. Okay. We, like, I, I, I was going to say 10. Like, I, I think like... 10% of people are going to play Maridon. 
Man, yeah. bro, you know I'll never count out Maradon, but like, man, hey, I'll, I'll put 8%, but that's crazy. Bro. <laughs> hey, hey, the sex good. The sex very good. Maybe maybe people don't realize it. And I'm, I'm not debating yeah. if it's good or not. I'm just saying 10% is like such a high number, I feel like. Yeah. I maybe I'm coping. Reasonable. But, okay, 8%. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay, Raging Bolt is a deck that I do feel like is a bit on like the downswing. I do think mm-hmm. it's like its meta share will finally start dropping, which it already mm-hmm. kind of is. Um. I mean, I still, I still think like the deck is fine because you beat the best deck in Drago, like the most popular deck. Um, I just feel like its matchup spread just like isn't where it needs to be right now. Like if I was playing an aggro deck, like I would literally just pick Maridon over Bolt right now. I think. Yeah, I somehow think this is the worst one of the aggro deck now. I don't know how, but somehow we've landed there. It's close. I, I just don't see what why you would play this over Maridon right now or Cloth personally. Probably just like comfort. People like, have been sl- playing sl- it. Like Slitherwing is good. Like you, like you have better. Like I don't know. Actually, I was gonna say, but Maradon actually just has hands for lost blocks. Mm, like Ogre Pond's a good attack on like, Charizard and stuff. Thought is solid. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, just, some cool. people might kill me for this, but I would put this in low B. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. I don't, it's definitely not A. No. Yeah. Okay, do you guys think we're going to finally have a tournament where Raging Bolt dips below 10% meta share? Yes. Oh, bro, I was going to say, like, below, like, 6. Yeah. Oh, it's not going Seven. below 6. There's no, there's no, I'm going to guess 9. I don't think it's going that low. <laughs> you had 9? Bro, this oh is, like, the God. default deck. Like, if people are brand new to the game or it's their first, like, so many people play this deck, right? And, like, this is a lot of people's deck they've been playing for so long. Like, I don't think, like, we'll see that drastic of a shift off of it. We gotta revisit this this uh like this distribution for better or for worse next week. We gotta Bro, reevaluate this. Baltimore and Neil said like four percent for Raging Bolt. And it was like fifteen. <laughs> oh, I love doing that. I actually remember watching that. That was pretty funny. I love doing that, bro. It's like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> it's like something outlandish. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, Brent got back to me on uh, what happened in his game. What do you say? Says, Game one, tell. I didn't get turned to attack, but I trolled with the promote since I didn't want Drago to get hit. So after Cleft with KO, I promoted Noctowl. Game two, I didn't see Drago until turn three. Okay, well, draw better, Brent. That guy we, sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, win a regional. Horrible now. player, guys. Doing? Jeez. That's crazy. Zero results. Um, <laughs> just to back up my very uh, crazy stat line prediction raging bolt right now and i know it's online so it doesn't really count but it's 4.7 percent share yeah but isn't sarah ledge like the second most popular deck online yeah that's why I, it's now <laughs> six but that's why i prefaced it with that oh. saying i know it's online okay um but it's 4.7 right now so i don't think this one's as crazy to be honest like to say it's around right. six i think it's fair i'll put it at eight percent i still think that's low sure okay sarah ledge is this even c tier like I wouldn't even put this on the no. tier list. What, okay. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, can we Boston Pizza tier? All right, Boston Pizza <laughs> tier. Two percent. Yeah. All right, is Hydreigon joining it in D tier? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. It's, it's, it's Luxie slash Boston Pizza slash oh, uh, Eaton yeah. Center tier. Yeah. Slash uh, Daddy Strip Club or whatever it was. <laughs> Sugar Daddy, Daddy. what? <laughs> Sugar Daddy right, Club. No, what? no, no more talking about. <laughs> It's, a sh- it's just a name, guys. It's not actually a bad place. Right. <laughs> it's just a normal club, man. Man's around here thinking of some crazy joint. All right, whatever. Uh, uh, Boston Pizza Tier is what we're going to call it. That's what D Tier is? Boston Pizza Tier? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Gardevoir. I still don't think Gardevoir is A Tier to me. I still think it's B Tier. Um, mm-hmm. I just I still mm-hmm. don't believe that its Drago matchup is like 50-50. Like, I still think Drago's a bad matchup. Uh, and I don't think Charizard's that good of a matchup either, to be honest. I think it's slightly unfavored. So. I think it's like, I think it's fine. I'm pretty confident. You think? Um, Charizard's now okay. I, I don't think anyone's debating the Drago thing, though. I think everyone just knows it's not a good matchup. Yeah. I think it's like high B tier is where I would put it. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think it's better it's than Lost Go and Golden Go and Bolt. But... Yeah. Yeah. It'll have a low play rate, but it's one of those things where someone can just high roll in the tournament. Like well, they just good, did. Good right? players like to play Gardevoir, right? So. We'll see Henry Chow in day two with Gardevoir, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm going to guess like five. I don't doubt it. What do you guys think? Yeah, I was going to say five. Yeah. Fine by me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Snorlax. I actually think Snorlax isn't in that bad of a spot. It's like Lugia's way down in play, which was like your worst matchup. Uh. Like, you're pretty good against Charizard, I think. The only annoying thing is some Charizards are playing Cologne now because for, like, Pikachu and stuff. 
That mm-hmm. makes your matchup worse. Um, Isn't cloth no bueno? Oh yeah, cloth's like an auto loss. Actually, that's a good point. Like big no bueno. Like mm-hmm. I think this is going way down, guys. This did you guys see like? like yeah, go ahead. Did you guys see the root fossil tweet? Yeah, I from, can't remember. From uh, what's oh, my Sander. Sander. Sander tweeted it, right? So yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Like, um, there's still some holes in it. Like the electrode can still attack. Um. Yeah, like maybe like the audience, I was going to ask, what the hell is a root fossil? Root fossil is an interesting option to wall out the new poison deck. Maybe the first time the no special conditions clause on fossils is this relevant. With a bit of special energy removal, it's quite tough to get through for cloth or trafficos. So root fossil is like, uh, you treat it as a basic, but then like you can't poison, be poisoned. So he's basically saying like it, when it dies, I don't think, does it give up a prize or no? No, it does give a prize, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it gives prize. Probably, oh. but it, yeah. But I guess he's just saying, like, you just, like, put this in the active a million times, and then, like, you just play Enhanced Hammer as Yakima, like, four times, and you think you win. But Rowan's right. You could just play Electrode or something. If you, okay, if you put, like, Hero's Cape on your Root Fossil... <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I think that works. And then, like, they have to... Their attack costs one more. So they have to attach an energy oh, to wait, attack. Oh, you're right. So as long as this Pokemon... Oh, no, I didn't even know this ability. Okay, yeah, so then Electrode doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, as long as it's in the active, their attacks, you have to... Um, oh, bro, this does work, then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was talking about the Electrode because, like, um, that's the only thing they can attack you with. Like, they can't attack with Terrapagos. Otherwise, that would just kill you, right? But it needs three. Yeah. And what are we talking about playing this in? Is this in Pidgeot? This would be, like, a Pidgeot uh, control type thing, probably. This can't be yeah. a Snorlax thing. Uh, Like, probably not. Because they would just, like, kill your Rotom, and then you can't function... I don't even know if this would work like in Pidgeot control. I haven't I actually tried to cook. I think we're we're digging real deep with this one, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Well, I mean, like Sander <laughs> is like the king of cooking, right? So Yeah. Should we just go ahead and put block in C tier and move on with our lives? Yeah. I I would love that so much. <laughs> well, what, like four percent, three percent? I don't know. Yeah. Four, sure. People like on a good stuff. day, it's like four percent, right? Which like I probably put it at like three. Yeah, it was four percent last time. I'll just leave it at four. I could see the argument for like B tier, but like yeah, I think C tier is fine. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know, man. You, you know, Snorlax too. You like, auto kinda, lose to like. I was gonna say it's kind of hard in Masters to win with Snorlax because like once you get to the top tables, like people know what they're doing against Snorlax, right? Um, yeah. But like I feel like maybe like it just to make day two or like maybe if you play in like juniors or seniors, I think Snorlax is actually a lot better because it's actually like kind of tricky to play against sometimes, right? So yeah, um, the thing is like you auto lose to the most like bus and popular deck right now that everyone's like, yo, claw, 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 right? Like, I mean, like yes, I, like, that sketches me out. Like every deck that I look on this list, like, like at least ten to fifteen percent of the meta is stuff you're like, I do not want to hit this, right? So it's like if Snorlax, is, if Snorlax's bad matchup is the cloth, and like your matchups are fine against all the other stuff. Like, I think that's, like, reasonable. Like, that's kind of, like, how all the other decks function as well. So, um, yeah. I don't think there's a single deck we've gone through so far where I'm, like, it doesn't have, like, a really bad matchup. So. Like. I, I agree. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah, that's just true, Maybe right? Golden Go, but, like, I don't know. Golden Go's bad matchup is itself, man. Sure. Oh, I feel like Drago's a bad matchup for Golden Go. Really? I don't think, I don't think Drago's a bad it's matchup. It's pretty 50-50. Can you just two two two? In theory, it seems. I feel like whoever goes first is gonna win. Like, how do you two 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 each other? Okay, here's the problem though. Like, your golden go, you go first. Drago goes Cleffa plus one prize around the bench. Okay, they have to get that, bro. Bro, what? That's like two. And if I'm playing, if I'm playing, if I'm going first, I can get Togekiss. I have three turns to flip heads. Uh, surely Drago can just like kill the Togekiss and retain the prize trade. Like, there's no way you can do that. Yo, yeah, okay, let me, you can you can so do it. You can like uh Gudra the Togekiss. Then you're still behind in prizes. You can't get countercatcher. They have to have boss. I'm sure there's a line. I haven't thought about the Togekiss I specifically. Know, that means like, turn two, you're getting prime catcher on Togekiss. Most likely. Or just like Gudra, you don't die. So if you or Gudra, like, I need what? Uh I need how many energy? Eight? Eight plus that's, one on the golden go. It's like a lot two, of energy. That's two SERs. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay, also, maybe. okay, maybe I'm biased because my deck has a Halucha, so it's just like Halucha Pult on turn two, yeah, and you that, just. Like... I, I agree. It's like really annoying. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it depends on the text. So okay, fair. Okay, if we've hit cloth now, do you guys think it's A tier? <laughs> I think it's. I think I actually think it's A tier. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm going A tier. 
And then, okay, the question is, how much play is this deck going to have? Like, it's been dominating tournaments. Like, it had an over 50% conversion in Stuttgart. I don't know what it was in Perth, because we didn't get the meta share, but... Mm. Is this reaching 10%? Do you guys think Cloth will get that high? I don't think it's going to get that high, but I think it'll be close. I was oh, going to guess, yeah. like, 8, probably. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. 9. Yeah, I think people really like Cloth, like, playing the deck. It is really fun. I actually mm. like playing Cloth, too. I think it's just like a tough sell for a lot of people who are like super serious about the game to even pick up this deck in the first place. You guys know what I mean? Like, why would yeah. it be a tough sell? I don't know. Like, I feel like I just look at this deck. Like, you look at the list. Yeah. There's a Genesect, a Hasuian Electrode, and a Rangru, and you're just like, like, yeah. what, what's going on? How can this deck actually be good? Because like the entry barrier to this whole thing is picking up the deck for the first time. Like all three of us yeah. said that where we were like, we looked at this and we're like, what the hell is this? And then we picked it up or played against it. We're like, this is pretty good. So that being the barrier, and you combine that with egos and people who look at decks are like, this just looks like junk. Like, I feel like that brings the play rate down, in I, my opinion. I don't know, bro. Look, at Stu look who played it in Stuttgart. Like, a lot of the really good players played it. Like, oh, uh, I believe it. Man. Robin, I'm just saying world it would be champion, higher. Nico, IC champion. Yuho, IC champion. Jesper, world champion. I know Rahul played this tournament. I don't know. I think. I agree. The, I think good players would pick it up. So. I just think there's a barrier to people picking it up, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I think it would be higher if it was more of a like a kind of an attractive looking deck. Yeah. So I don't know, whatever, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, maybe. But yeah, I, I think, kid, do you guys think a cloth will make top eight in Toronto? Oh, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think I it'll make top eight too. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, Pidgeot Control. Uh, we can include that one deck that Emma played, the one with like the Sylveon and like the draft ring. Uh, where do you guys think this stands? <laughs> Yo, like <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, uh, either. Okay, let's. This just... is the most impossible deck to rank, man. I feel like this deck gets destroyed by Drago. Probably. And I can't think of any like insane reasons to play it. So my instinct is just C tier. Sure, I'll put it in C tier. Okay. I feel like we're being a little <laughs> harsh, but I can agree with it. Okay. I think the deck's still good. In the right hands, I think the deck's still good. I think C tier is for like actually I guess we have Snorlax in there. Alright, never mind. Carry on. Yeah, I think it does I think <laughs> I don't know. We'll just put control in C tier, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I have nothing to say here. Alright, and you said Turbo Roy Moon is really good. Is it a B tier deck? I think it's a B tier deck. Okay. I think so too, probably. If we're gonna put Raging mm -hmm. Molten there. The deck um, is just like it's strong. It's just good. I have no other way to kind of explain it. It really is just like, hey, I'm going to put up a beat stick and blow up whatever you have there. But that is pretty good. And now you have the new Karidon, which makes things pretty cool. Um, you have Roaring Moon Baby. So you can almost turn yourself into like a pseudo ancient box sometimes. Um, I was playing this build with like two of each. So I just kind of running around with uh, single prize mans all over the board and taking some pretty favorable prize trades. So the deck is good, man. The deck is good. I wouldn't be surprised to see it do well. Another good thing for it is one of its worst matchups was Lugia, and like Lugia is like just way down as well. Um, so just because of that, I think it's a little bit better than it was before. Um, yeah, I haven't played enough with it, but I know like this is another archetype that like dating back to a couple of years ago, people loved playing Roaring Moon. So people might dust it off again. Um, and I like the fact that you play Pekka around EX as well. So you just auto all like the stall issues that you that you may have along the way and. I don't know, you just pick up, you can pick up random wins at random times, the same way Cloth does, but just yep. donking people. Just push presser, so, where would you get, what percent would you give this one, Neil? Like, three or four? Well, like, a, like a four-piece, four-piece McNuggets. Sure, I think four is a reasonable take. Oh, four is, like, a triggering number to me right now. I gotta be up at 4 a.m. for UIC Reg, because I missed the first oh, one. Oh, you missed it? That's a skill diff in it. I was, I was, uh, drunk on ginger ale at the office Christmas party, and <laughs> I, I lost track of time. I did sign in in time, but I actually just didn't get a spot, which is really, Wait, really you surprising. Guys it may have been party on Tuesday? On a Tuesday afternoon. Oh, that's brutal. Nice. No cocktails, nothing. So I was literally just drunk. Wait, up you guys had a, but dry, I... a dry Christmas party? Or you were just dry? No, we had it. We actually had a dry Christmas party because oh, okay. it was on site this year. We had it in the uh, office. Oh, well, the budget mm -hmm. cuts are going um, crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's coming out of my pension for sure. Um, <laughs> I think it's because I was in the bathroom because I don't want to like register in front of my coworkers, so I just like went into the bathroom to try and register, and I had, like a solid one bar in there, so maybe I uh, screwed oh, up the process. Bro, I but anyways, had no, I had no calls at my old job. I remember one time I was in a meeting with like the CFO, and I literally told her, "I'm like, hey, like I just need to take a break for one minute because I need to register a tournament." Yeah. <laughs> the problem is now though, it's not a one minute operation. Like you no, gotta no, it's sit in the with, queue. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, 
it's a deep operation these days. So I was sitting at the work casino table. They gave us like invisible, like imaginary money. And you sat mm-hmm. at the casino table and you could play blackjack. So I got up, left, and uh, I missed. But a lot of people seem to have missed. So I don't yeah, feel bad. I think maybe it's anecdotal. But it just seems to be like more people missed than normal. So maybe it was yeah. just like demand is even higher this year. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Like if you've been to the Excel Center, it's literally like the biggest convention center I've ever been to. Yeah. I'm like if they want mm-hmm. to, they could just get like extend the hall even more. So, it bro, Rowan, si- you remember 2022 Worlds when they rented out like literally like five halls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it was, was insane. Like, yeah, like here, like you look at the thing, and I know that was the the Worlds you were at, but you look at the thing for UIC, like double it, and that was World. Yeah. Like they have the ability to do this, and we've we've yeah. talked about this before. If Juan Soto can make seven hundred sixty-five million dollars, I'll bring this back. Pokemon can deepen their pockets. They have money. It's also That's just not- like they're leaving money on the table. <laughs> so like I don't know. From an economic mm-hmm. standpoint, it just doesn't make sense. But anyways, one hundred forty bucks ahead times, to register, so. bro. <laughs> oh yeah, that was crazy. When like I, I like like how much it cost this year. Yeah, so, I wouldn't know, it, but you know, was it in pounds? I remember being like it seventy. Pounds. It was seventy-five pounds, I think. Which pounds. I don't know how many US. Do- it's probably like a hundred US dollars. Bear pounds. Ninety. I didn't even look. I just like saw the pound symbol or whatever, and I was yeah. just like, "Oh, this is just gonna be bad." I and mean, I just bro, like, they could charge like two hundred pounds, and like I guess I would still pay it. So like, <laughs> probably yeah, a hundred, a hundred coming out of the uh, Canadian dollars. Oh, so coming out of the winter tires fund for sure. Yeah. Yo, I like, have wow. the tires. I just have to switch them onto my car. Like, I just oh. have to are go. you gonna do it yourself? You're not gonna pay a man, right? You're gonna do it yourself, dude. I'm definitely paying someone. I do not know how to change tires. Damn it, bro! Bring it to my house. I got you. Five minutes. Okay, I don't have yeah. rims, so can you can you switch the tires onto the rims? All right, never mind. Never mind. Pay the man. Pay the man. Pay the man. Pay the man. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yo, speaking switching of things, rims is crazy hard. Speaking of things that need to get fixed, my faucet broke like two days ago. Bro, oh, my apartment's my so cursed lately, bro. Brother, your house is not serious. I don't know what to I tell know. you. So I went to fix it. Like I couldn't. Like my dad came today too. So like some tools didn't have them. We couldn't fix it. So like my landlord's coming tomorrow to install a new sink. Nice. Fantastic. So, bro, I have to brush my I brush my teeth at the kitchen sink right now. It's like so weird. Yeah, but, yeah, that would throw me off. Yeah, bro. yeah, I just I don't like it. Like brushing my teeth in my kitchen doesn't get me into bedtime mood. So I can't. Yeah, sleep. don't blame you. <laughs> so mm-hmm. all right, um, jumping back. All right, we have Lugia. Ooh, meta manipulation time. Let's go. Okay, 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 okay. I'm I mean, I think, meta manipulation. I think it's I think it's just solidly B tier. Um, I think his demise is like so greatly like overstated. Like your matchups aren't even like that bad. Like yes, Maridon's getting more popular, but like you're still pretty good against the other stuff. Like half the Dragos cut Temple, so now that's just like an insanely favored matchup. Uh, Cloth is like a slightly favorable matchup. Uh, Charizard is like a slightly favorable matchup. Like Golden Go is like a fine matchup. The Turbo Dex is like a fine matchup besides Maridon. Uh, like Thorns is still like a two percent deck. I guess it depends if that like Dragapult deck becomes popular, but I don't know. I think Lugia is still fine. Uh, I just think people have like after Sacramento just decided to like just delete the deck from the meta. So it's still probably like in my top considerations for this weekend. So very honorable. I still think it's good. Yeah. But well, give me the argument of why it's not still a decent deck. Oh, I don't have one. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll skip the Maridon part. I think Gardevoir is an issue. Like the, I think the Turbo Guardi version is pretty bad. Um, I don't think all the Turbo decks are very good matchups. Like I think you're pretty 50-50 against all the Turbo decks. You're like extremely favored into Moon. I think you're 50-50 into Ogre, and I think you're bad into Maridon. Do you actually beat Cloth? Yeah, it's like definitely slightly favored. Like, can't they just play around Legacy Energy using Poison? Yeah, but and you then... can also just like spam Chinchino on them, and they miss Cloth for one turn. The game's over. Uh, if you like, they can't knock out Lugia when they go second. Like, you just start Lugia, they just can't knock it out. And then, if you only have to bench, like, for example, Lugia and a Squawk turn one, you just win because you eventually get a single prize board. And you go to uh, You can hands the, clo- the cloth. If you have to take a one prize knockout, you can hands the Squawk to go back to even. Um, they, if they poison themselves with cloth, you can just Aqua return. They don't get, they die from poison. They poison Trapagos, uh, Chinchino lets them die from poison. Uh, I played a lot that matchup because like all my home, a lot of my kids play Lugia, so I've tested the matchup mm-hmm. like almost all of them, and it's like yeah, I think Lugia is definitely favored. So is the Charizard matchup actually good? Yeah, Charizard's always been a fine matchup. Oh, what can't they like Dusnore your Cincino and okay, then like you play, pull your chop? So or... like turn two, if you just go hands, like they have to respond, like they need to literally go like knockout hands plus Dusnore, 
right? What if they just like play a wait, why do they need to why, why can't they just like play a board with no little guys and just like kill a chops or something? But how are they getting turn two, you think they can get that? They can involve both their Charmanders up, they can get then like, take... turn like turn they one, can... what if they just play like Charmander, Charmander, Pidgey? With no Rotom? Rotom, sure. I guess then you kill a Rotom. Yeah. But then how do you take your last two? You just have nothing. Bro, if you just set up one Chinchino, like they have no, to. But you can't because they kill Chops. Countercatcher. What, what, bro, what? Your turn two board is literally hands and then two energy on a Minchino. So, like, they have to literally go Dust Norm, Minchino plus Counter Counter Chops. Oh, then yeah. Charizard's, then okay. Charizard's in the, the advantage. But that's really hard for them to do. Yo, I, you're like. So, oh. You're like questioning my like turn two Charizard, and then you're gonna have turn two double chops, Sincino double energy, hands four well, energy. You actually, if you play Lugia, you actually go second to Charizard, so it's actually like a very reasonable board to make. It's more reasonable. So like, trust bro. The matchup's like probably like fifty five forty five in my opinion, but like I don't think it's like I think it's like so fine. Yeah, like, they also, like, like, yeah Charizard like doesn't, Charizard doesn't play text for Lugia either. Like okay, okay. Okay. I could so it's like, I could hear an argument that it's fine that you have like somewhere between forty and sixty percent win rate, but I just like. Yeah. I feel that way about so many of these decks where you just have like 40 to 60% win rate and then you're just really bad versus Maridon. Well, bro, like that's why Lugia's in B tier and not A tier anymore. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I mean, the one thing Lugia has that a lot of these other decks don't have is like you destroy Drago if they don't play Temple. Like it's like so hard for them to win. Yeah, that's true. So it's like that's the most popular deck. That's probably the deck that's going to be like around the top tables the most. And then, like, Maridon is, like, it's not favored. But, like, if they have one turn where they don't take two prizes, like, they just lose on the spot, right? So. And Bear, Bear is pretty good against them, so. I don't know. I think Lugia is, like, probably going to be, like, 4%, if I had to guess, like, meta share. It might yeah. even be less, to be honest, but um, I don't know. I still think the deck is fine, so. I feel like I have to inspire confidence in my fellow Lugia players, you know? We'd love to see it. Lo loyal to your deck. Yes. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So. It's not even fun to play, but I'm just like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. Good. You just like get your chops. Yeah, it's just like it's it's like not fun because like a lot of times like your hand your turn one hands are like so awkward. Like you're like playing like capture and roam as it goes half the time. But it's like once I get set up, I'm like, oh, the deck's just like so good. So. Oh, it's another issue. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah, but I don't but know. Like, half these decks, bro. Like it's like a battle to get set up with them. Yeah, I mean, Drago can be a battle sometimes. Bro, I when I, whenever I go first with, like, a stage 2 deck, like, Guardia or Charizard, I'm like, uh, alright, please bless me with Poff in turn 1, or else, like, the game's not gonna go well. Or I guess in Charizard's mm -hmm. case, you're the one Nest Ball. Drago's right, sorry, I was watching Box like, Highlights. I'm tuning back in. Um, who's Guys, highlights? everyone just... Box Highlights. Uh, Giannis dropped 37, Dame at 32. Um, but make <laughs> your decks consistent, everybody, please, for the love of God. <laughs> like... We keep coming back to this. The the way a lot of these decks are losing this format is like you just lose if your deck doesn't operate. And it's more so like magnified in this format with Dustnor than it is any other time. So many aggro decks. Like I think just make your deck consistent. Cut the text where you can. The last one you'll hear is your this Dragapult deck. I think it's B tier. Like the Dragapult Thorns deck. Oh, it's Dragapult Thorns, not just Dragon. Okay, I'll okay, put yeah. normal Dragapult on the list. They're both B tier? I think they're both in B tier. Oh, bro, I think Dragon Ball like, Thorns is probably like... The hell? Oh, yeah, okay. Whatever. I think oh, it's yeah. like slightly, slightly better than the Dragon Ball regular. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, Did it reset all the percentages? Yes. Oh, I'm God. Just trying okay, to remake those to the best of your ability. Um... Yeah, like I, like I touched on earlier, like with the Dragon Ball regular version, like it feels like when you get set up, you can beat everything, because Phantom Dive is probably the best attack in the game. It's reasonably attainable. Um, but you don't get to that point most of the time, and uh, I don't know. I played a cup on the weekend, felt pretty good, um, but I came against a Raging Bolt top 8, I couldn't do anything about it. Just like times like that, where you come across aggro decks that run you off the board, there's not much you can do, my friends. So, uh, just for that reason, I think I'm going to be putting it on the back burner, but I really was considering it at one point to play it to yeah. Toronto. Also, I tested Thorns, Dragon Bolt Thorns against Charizard. If Charizard plays uh, Cologne, you actually lose. You have no way to go through the Charizards. Like, they're too big. Like, you mm -hmm. just can't and they one shot you yeah so can you like lean into the dragapult part and maybe that works or no no i tried but then it's just like they set up two charizards i'm like bro i can't kill these charizards like mm -hmm. it takes too long so. i'm gonna take a devo yeah actually i actually think i'm like i don't know why it doesn't play devo like this deck when i've been looking at the list uh i think it makes you i mean like all your from unfavored to favorite in my opinion so yeah 
all your cards favor Devo. Like literally your whole deck favors Devo. Like Dragon Bolt's so good at setting up Devo plays. Iron Thorns naturally plays Devo. Like why are we not playing this? Also, like it makes your mirror if this deck is really like popular for whatever reason, like it makes your mirror good. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. And what percent are you guys gonna give this deck? Like three? Yeah. Yeah. Three. And then how much for normal Dragon Bolt? Like three? Less, probably two. Yeah, I was gonna say less. Yeah, I'd actually put Dragon Ball Thorns a little bit higher, in my opinion. Yeah, like I feel kind of kind of all over the place. Do you guys think people are still gonna play normal Thorns, or do you think everyone's just play this like Dragon Ball version? Have people been playing like, regular Thorns? Like, I mean, I don't know. It hasn't been on the mm-hmm. graphic the last couple of tournaments, but like, I feel like it's always been a two-three percent deck. I'm always patrolling these like mm-hmm. online tournaments and stuff, and it seems like they're both kind of around. So I don't know. Like, it, it is a different clientele for both. I think. Yeah, I don't know. If I, I don't want to put Thorns on this list because it's going to reset all my percentages again, but I'll just say Thorns, like, B-tier, 2%. What do you guys think? Sure, like why not? B-tier. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. The only good thing is that B-tier. I think Drago players are cutting Noctowl, which yeah. makes that matchup a lot better. Uh, actually, how many... I'm curious if I clicked on Reggie Drago, how many people are still playing Noctowl in this format? I'm going to guess, like, 25%. Uh oh, it's down to like fifteen percent. Wow, it's very low. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Gudra, Gudra's Damn, we were we we really rambled today, eh, boys. We've been on oh, here for a while. Did. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, we just yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, there's sixteen percent, or I guess fourteen percent of the meta unaccounted for by us. So just random stuff, I guess. Or some of these might get more play, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all excited for Toronto. If you guys right. see us, come say hi. And Neil uh, is going to bring us some bucket hats. If you want to buy a bucket hat, you can actually buy them this time. We have very, very few left actually, as of as of saying this right now. Mine. So if you want one, yo, hit me, hit me up ASAP, Rocky. If you want one, man, like, <laughs> we're going out of style. There's only like four left at this point. So um, if there's tons of demand, we can try and make more. But yeah, it's probably what we got at this point. Um, before we sign off, I want to continue our little segment where we give a couple beats to listen to during the week. So uh, Neil's beats, I, re- I figured I want to do one pass, one one present is how okay. we're going to do this. So I'm going to give a present that just came out. Uh, a lot of you have probably heard the song Adore You by uh, by Hugel. And if you haven't, just listen to it. You've probably heard it on the radio. Um, a remix came out with Jay Balvin and Ellie Golding. It's unreal. Uh, that came out this week. And in the morning, J. Cole and Drake remastered version. The song debuted like 13 years ago. Uh, the remastered came out this week. I've been loving it. Um, Blast from the past. I'm gonna give you, give you boys live. A Machine Gun Kelly and Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne, local to Canadian. We want to shut her out on the pod. So that's a great alt rock song, and I'm trying my best not to make it all rap. So um, those are the beats for the week. And uh, if you listen to those, listen to them. Uh, listen to the clean versions, please. Um, unless you're of age, then do whatever you want. But I said to and then uh, I'll give. If you're coming to Toronto Regionals, I'll give a very local song. Listen to the anthem by Cardinal Official. Uh, mm, that's a classic. very Toronto song. So watch the music video with yeah. it too. So <laughs> I've never seen that video, man. You've never seen. I it? don't even know what to that. It's just no, him going around the boroughs of Toronto. So oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought it was gonna be some foul, so that's good. Um, so if you see us, please do say hi. Um, if you need any advice on where to go in Toronto, all three of us can, can help you. Um, just let us know and I'll be, I'll be in Toronto all weekend. I think I'm oh. staying at the Fairmont on Friday night. My boy got a room, so oh, nice. I'll be posted up in the Fairmont. Uh, and, uh, Karen will be at his house where his faucet may or may not work in Berlin and, uh, Rowan will be in Burlington. Is that right, Rowan? Actually, I'll be at my I parents, will, I'll be at my parents' house, Neil, because I have people staying with me. My house isn't, my oh, parents' house. Really closer. Are you closer right in there? No, I can, I can walk to the venue from my apartment, but I have to take the subway from my parents' house, which is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Shout out the Farrah family. Um, all right. Uh, if there's nothing else, let us know down below what you think about the meta, where it's going to go, if our percentages are off, and if we're off, and if you like our bucket hats. You like my Santa hat? Hopefully uh, people like my Santa hat. I love um, the Santa love hat. I want, I want one. Are you selling those? I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I can I can make a business out of anything. <laughs> Don't try me, boy. <laughs> but yeah, if you're coming in, uh, enjoy the city. Uh, really just walk around. I think our biggest advice from all three of us, I think, would be just to walk around. Just see stuff. Like Toronto's one of those cities where you just wander and you'll find some pretty cool stuff. Um, so hopefully everyone enjoys it. Yep. Uh, we'll be back next week. Rowan, as always, thank you for being here. Uh, we really appreciate Go you. Go check out Rowan on. Stavino, TCG on YouTube. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Always have a lot of fun on this podcast. And we will uh we'll leave all the links down below as well so you can uh, go check out Rowan's stock and stuff. Um 
But best of luck in Toronto. If you're not going to Toronto, uh, have fun watching, and we will see you next week. Take care. Peace. Later.